Welcome to Source. My name is Darsh, and today we're discussing 10 of the most bone-chilling serial killers of all time. At number 1, meet Ted Bundy, the only guy who could make breaking the ice sound way scarier than it should be. Bundy was born in 1946 and began his career as a notorious American serial killer in the 1970s. Despite his charming exterior and law student persona, Bundy concealed a dark and violent nature. His method involved pretending to be injured and then using crutches or a fake cast to then gain sympathy and trust. Operating in multiple states, Bundy manipulated victims by creating a false sense of security before launching brutal attacks, leaving behind a disturbing trail of crime. His victims varied in age, making it challenging for authorities to predict his next move. The toll of his killing spree amounted to at least 30 young women. In 1978, Bundy's killing spree was stopped when he was captured in Pensacola, Florida after a routine traffic stop. Although his cunning nature allowed him to escape custody twice, showcasing a chilling level of intelligence, might I add, he was eventually recaptured. The nationwide manhunt that followed underscored the difficulty of capturing this elusive killer. Ultimately, Bundy was recaptured and executed in the electric chair in 1989 in Florida, concluding a dark chapter in the American crime history. Next up, at number two, meet Jeffrey Dahmer, the absolute last person that you'd want to invite over for a dinner party. Born on May 21, 1960, he gained notoriety as the Milwaukee cannibal for a gruesome killing spree between 1978 and 1991. In a chilling pattern, Dahmer lured 17 young men to his apartment, where he then perpetrated horrifying acts that included drugging, killing, dismembering, and engaging in acts of necrophilia and cannibalism. The turning point in Dahmer's reign of terror occurred in 1991, when a planned victim managed to escape, leading the police to his apartment in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The subsequent investigation exposed the full extent of the horrors that unfolded within the walls of his residence. In 1992, Dahmer was convicted and sentenced to life in prison, providing some semblance of justice for the victims and for their families. His victims were predominantly young men in their late teens and early 20s. However, Dahmer's time behind bars was tragically brief. In 1994, he met a grim fate when he was killed in prison in Portage, Wisconsin. The circumstances surrounding his death only added to the macabre legacy left by his unspeakable crimes. Next up, at number 3, meet John Wayne Gacy. His balloon animals were just so twisted that even Freud would need a therapist. The original psychoanalyst born on March 17, 1942, projected an outward image of community goodwill that just concealed a horrifying truth. Despite his success as a businessman and his role as a children's party clown, Gacy harbored a dark secret that unfolded between 1972 and 1978, and I shouldn't have to say this, but just never trust a children's party clown. Nevertheless, during this period, he preyed on 33 young boys and men, committing unspeakable acts of violence. Gacy's sinister plans tended to involve luring victims to his home under the false pretense of employment opportunities. Once there, he subjected them to sexual assault and ultimately, murder. The stark contrast between his public persona and private atrocities added an extra layer of shock to the revelations that followed his arrest in 1978 in Des Plaines, Illinois, where human remains were discovered in his crawl space of all places. His victims were predominantly young boys and men. In 1994, the chapter of Gacy's reign of terror closed with his execution by lethal injection in Illinois. At number 4, meet Aileen Wardos. Born on February 29, 1956, she emerged as a troubled individual whose life took a dark turn into prostitution. Between 1989 and 1990, Wardos committed a series of murders claiming self-defense as her motive. Her narrative revolved around self-preservation, asserting that she killed seven men who posed a threat to her during her work as a sex worker. I guess you could say her pickup lines were as lethal as her aim. She really knew how to shoot her shot, and unfortunately, others too. Wardos's killing style rooted in her harrowing experiences added complexity to her case. Her arrest in 1991 marked the beginning of a legal battle that led to a death sentence. In 2002, Wardos faced the ultimate consequence, being executed by lethal injection in Florida. Her victims tended to be adult male, and the story of Aileen Wuornos is a tragic exploration of a troubled life entangled with violence and survival instincts. At number 5, meet Richard Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker. He was born on February 29, 1960, and his reign of terror left Southern California in fear during the mid-1980s. Between 1984 and 1985, Ramirez committed 13 gruesome murders, instilling terror through chilling home invasions. His style was particularly horrifying, involving breaking into homes, assaulting and murdering victims while they slept, because nothing says sweet dreams like a surprise visiting from the Night Stalker. 
The Night Stalker's crimes created a climate of fear as communities grappled with the unpredictability of his attacks. The sinister nature of his home invasions added an element of vulnerability, as Ramirez targeted the very place meant to be a sanctuary for most. His victims ranged in age, and his brutal spree left a lasting impact on the collective memory of Southern California. In 1985, Ramirez's reign of terror came to an end when he was captured in Los Angeles. Following his conviction, he received a death sentence. The story took a final turn in 2013 when Ramirez died in prison in California. His brief but intense criminal spree left an indelible mark on the collective memory of Southern California, serving as a haunting reminder of the vulnerability of homes and the communities that they shelter. Next up, meet Ed Gain. Born on August 27, 1906, Ed Gain's life veered into the macabre in the mid-20th century, marking him as one of America's most notorious criminals. Initially a grave robber, Gain's descent into darkness escalated to murder. Though he confessed to two killings, suspicions linger that his gruesome acts may have claimed more. What sets Gain apart is his chilling penchant for crafting trophies and items from human body parts, revealing a level of depravity that just shocked the nation. The turning point came in 1957 when authorities discovered human remains in Gaines' home in Plainfield, Wisconsin, unearthing the horrifying extent of his actions. I guess you could say that he was into some really extreme arts and crafts. Subsequent investigations painted a portrait of a disturbed mind driven by a ghastly obsession with the human form. Gaines was deemed mentally unfit for trial, spending the remainder of his days in a mental institution in Wisconsin. His legacy endures not only as a symbol of horror, but also as a cautionary tale about the depths of human depravity and the fine line between madness and malevolence. At number 7, meet Andre Chikatilo. Born on October 16, 1936, Andre Chikatilo, infamously known as the Butcher of Rostov, emerged as a harrowing figure who cast a dark shadow over the Soviet Union from 1978 to 1990. His reign of terror marked a brutal killing spree claiming the lives of 53 victims, with a particular focus on children, adolescents, and young women. Chikatilo's modus operandi involved luring individuals to secluded areas where he would then sexually assault, mutilate, and murder them. Needless to say, his idea of a close encounter was anything but friendly. The breakthrough in Chikatilo's case came in 1990, with the advancements in DNA evidence leading to his capture. His trial in 1992 laid bare the gruesome details of his crimes, providing a semblance of justice for the victims and for their families. Chikatilo was ultimately executed in 1994 in Russia, bringing an end to one of the most disturbing chapters in Soviet criminal history. His legacy endures as a chilling reminder of the capacity for evil within the human psyche. Next up, meet Gary Ridgway. Born on February 18, 1949, Gary Ridgway, infamously dubbed the Green River Killer, had a knack for making people disappear. Talk about having a green thumb, or in his case, a deadly one. He cast a long and ominous shadow over the Pacific Northwest during the 1980s and 1990s. His notorious killing spree spanning two decades claimed the lives of 49 confirmed victims, predominantly sex workers. Ridgway's meticulous approach involved disposing of bodies in wooded areas, leaving a haunting trail of death and despair. The breakthrough in the case came in 2001 when advances in DNA technology led to Ridgway's capture in Renton, Washington. Subsequent investigations revealed the extent of his crimes, horrifying the public with the calculated brutality of his actions. In a plea deal, Ridgway admitted guilt, avoiding the death penalty by providing information about the locations of his victims' remains. Gary Ridgway, now serving a life sentence without parole, remains a symbol of the dark underbelly that can exist within society. His case underscores the importance of advancements in forensic technology in bringing notorious criminals to justice while providing closure for the families. At number 9, meet Albert Fish. Born on May 19, 1870, Albert Fish epitomized true evil in early 20th century America. His sadistic actions included the murder of at least one child, although he confessed to three and was suspected of much more. Fish's killing style involved gruesome acts of violence against young children, which also included cannibalism. In 1934, the wheels of justice began to turn as a letter detailing his crimes was traced back to Fish. This revelation led to his arrest, and the subsequent trial laid bare the horrific details of his deeds. The nation recoiled in horror at the depths of depravity that Fish had plunged into during his dark reign. In 1936, Albert Fish faced the ultimate consequence for his unspeakable crimes, meeting his end in the electric chair in New York. He believed in a well-seasoned life, but his recipe for terror left a bitter aftertaste for all of humanity. Last but not least, meet Dennis Rader. Born on March 9, 1945, Dennis Rader, infamously known as the BTK Killer, instilled fear in Kansas for nearly two decades, from 1974 to 1991. 
His sinister reign left a haunting trail of victims who were not only bound but tortured and killed, reflecting a chilling and distinct modus operandi. Adding to the terror, Raider taunted law enforcement and the media with brazen letters detailing his heinous acts. He really took mind games to a whole new level. His idea of a knock-knock joke was just truly spine-chilling. The capture of the BTK killer in 2004 came as a result of an unexpected communication error on Raider's part. A floppy disk he sent, seemingly harmless, was traced back to a computer at his church in Park City, Kansas. This oversight led to his identification, ending years of uncertainty and fear in the community. In the aftermath of his arrest, Raider pleaded guilty, providing gruesome details of all of his crimes. He is currently serving multiple life sentences without the possibility of parole in Kansas, marking the end of his reign of terror. The case of BTK Killer stands as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk within seemingly ordinary communities and the relentless pursuit of justice for the victims and their families. That's all for today, everyone. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my last video if you enjoyed this one and comment what you'd like to hear about next.